Hi, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, the UK supermarket swapping stickers for laser technology. But first, the Centre for Countering Digital Hate is warning that AI-powered voice cloning tools can be used to create disinformation during elections using the voices of prominent political figures. And it's not just about elections. Think about the way it could be used by fraudsters who seek to simulate your voice to speak to your bank. Think about how it could be used by even more dangerous criminals to tell your child that you're waiting for them in a different car today. You know, these tools have very few use cases. I mean, there's very few instances in which you directly need to be able to clone someone else's voice. Imran Ahmed is the chief executive of the organisation, who tested six of the leading AI audio generation platforms to see if they could create fake clips of leading politicians. We found that in 80% of instances, we're able to get these platforms to generate the voices of leading politicians saying things that they simply hadn't said, outrageous things, in fact. Things like saying that they'd been involved in a scandal or that they were extremely ill and or even telling people the wrong information about how to vote and when to vote. He told us they did have to do what he called jailbreaking on some sites to get around certain safeguards, but admitted it was actually quite easy. I mean, unfortunately, some of the the jailbreaking was very, very simple indeed. Sometimes they asked us to produce a sample of the voice of the person and we were able to produce that. So it's something that anyone that was determined to disrupt an election would find an insufficiently high barrier to preventing them from misusing these platforms. With just over a month to go before the UK general election on the 4th of July, there's not a lot of time for regulators to crack down on these kinds of sites. But Imran says some action will need to be taken soon. I think we're going to very rapidly after this election need an Online Safety Act 2, which deals with the things that were missing from the initial Online Safety Act, AI being the most glaring, but there are also things like the way that algorithms work, which the Online Safety Act doesn't address and is really important, and also the role of advertising, because let's never forget, this isn't about free speech. This is about monetized speech. Now to space, where the James Webb Space Telescope has broken its own record for spotting the most distant known galaxy. It's called Jade's GSZ140, a super catchy name of course, and NASA estimates it's from a time 290 million years after the Big Bang. That makes it even further away than the previous record holder, a galaxy seen at 325 million years after the Big Bang. Looking at it another way, if the universe is 13.8 billion years old, it means we're observing the galaxy when the cosmos was only 2% of its current age. Google has defended its AI overviews tool, which we told you about on Monday after it went viral for producing bizarre results for some users. The tech giant said for some queries that had barely been searched before, such as how many rocks should I eat, the tool took information from satirical content online, giving the result at least one small rock per day. Google said in some cases like this, where there was a data void or information gap, aka where there's a limited amount of high quality content about a particular topic, AI overviews gave results from sarcastic or trolly content from discussion forums. In a blog post, the company revealed it's made some fixes, including building better detection mechanisms for nonsensical queries that shouldn't show an AI overview, and updating their systems to limit the use of user-generated content in responses that could offer misleading advice. The world's largest botnet, a group of infected computers that hackers operate remotely to conduct mass cyber attacks and scams, has been taken down. A Chinese national has been arrested for allegedly being the mastermind behind a botnet that was used to steal billions of dollars. FBI Director Christopher Wray said the 911S5 botnet infected computers in nearly 200 countries and facilitated crimes including financial frauds, identity theft and child exploitation. 35-year-old Yunhei Wang was arrested in Singapore last week and allegedly made at least $99 million by selling access to criminals who used the botnet for scams. Following the recent volcanic eruptions in Iceland, footage has captured the mesmerizing sight of lava rivers flowing along the Reykjanes Peninsula. 
the town of Grindavik was once again evacuated, as well as the world-famous geothermal Blue Lagoon Spa, which was forced to close. Volcanic activity is said to have eased significantly, though, following the initial eruption. Coming up, the octopus caught on camera changing its color. Plus, are AI-generated emojis coming to iOS 18? Welcome back. Now, you know those tiny barcode stickers you get on avocados that can be a nightmare to remove? Well, Tesco is getting rid of them and replacing them with laser etching technology instead. High-powered lasers will remove a tiny section of the top layer of the skin on the supermarket's extra-large avocados to etch size information onto them. Tesco said the trial could save nearly a million plastic stickers on its loose extra-large avocados. An octopus has been filmed changing colour in North Wales. The footage, which shows a curled octopus on some rocks, changing from white to bright orange, was shot in Anglesey by Kira Taylor of the Marine Conservation Society. She was practising identifying sea creatures at the Menai Bridge Beach when beachgoers spotted tentacles appearing from under a rock. If you want to see it for yourself, there's a link to the video on the Evening Standard YouTube page in the show notes. And finally, it looks like AI-generated emojis are coming to the iPhone with the imminent iOS 18 update. It's thought Apple's AI will suggest emojis based on what you're texting, and it's thought we could get a glimpse of the new feature at the WWDC, the Worldwide Developers Conference event, in June. As well as emojis, though, there's more coming with iOS 18, including a big update for Siri, which could give you the ability to control specific iPhone app features with your voice. You are up to date. We're back on Monday afternoon at one o'clock. See you then.